<laughs> All right, thank you. So as Jessica said, I'm in the microbiology department, and I study bacteria that grow in hydraulically fractured wells, or fracking wells. And so I wanted to start off by showing you what one of these fracking wells looks like. And so in the image behind me, um, this fracking well is located in West Virginia. And these wells are located all across the United States, so hopefully now you'll be able to identify them. So why study hydraulic fracturing? Uh, hydraulic fracturing is the technique that's used in the United States to collect natural gas. And natural gas is a major energy resource for the United States at the moment. And you can see on the graph that the amount of natural gas that is produced by the United States has steadily been increasing since the early 2000s. And this increase is projected to continue through the year 2030. So hydraulic fracturing is really important right now. And next, you may be wondering where all this natural gas is coming from in the United States. So on the opposite part of the slide, you can see the top five producers of natural gas in the United States. And you can see that our home state of Ohio comes in at number two in the red bar. So hydraulic fracturing is going on all across the United States and in our home state, Ohio. So the next thing you may be wondering is why the state of Ohio can produce so much natural gas. And it turns out Ohio is located on top of two major shale formations, the Utica Shale, shown in gray, and then the Marcellus Shale that's in red. And so both of these shale formations contain natural gas. But in order to get access to, these natural, to this natural gas, we have to build hydraulically fractured wells. And so each colored dot on the second map represents a hydraulically fractured well that is currently producing natural gas in the state of Ohio. And the number of wells is predicted to increase in the upcoming years as the demand for natural gas increases. So I've been talking a lot about shale, and some of you may be wondering what exactly shale is. So shale is a type of rock that's found deep in the subsurface, and it's formed from millions of years of compacting uh, marine sediment. And so if we zoom into shale, we see that it is composed of, uh, it's full of tiny pores. And these pores are all filled with natural gas. And this natural gas is formed from the degra degradation of uh, organic material over the millions of years. So there's a lot of natural gas in these uh, shales. And in order to get access to them, a energy company has to hydraulically fracture the shale. And so I'm going to walk through the process of hydraulic fracturing using this image. And so on the image, our shale rock layer is at the very bottom. And you can see that the shale is anywhere from one to three miles below the surface. So it's very deep. And in order for an energy company to get access to the shale, they'll first have to drill uh, vertically straight down to the shale formation. And then they'll turn and drill horizontally through the shale formation. So a hydraulically fractured well is in the shape of an L. Now once these wells are drilled, they have to be filled with water. And it, since these wells are so de deep, it takes about 5 million gallons of water to fill just one well. And to put that into perspective, that's about 16 Olympic-sized swimming pools. So a lot of water is involved in this hydraulic fracturing process. And in order to fracture the shale, this water is shoved into the subsurface using a high-pressure technique that causes the shale to fracture and crack. And then those fractures and cracks open up those pores where the natural gas was trapped and allow that natural gas to escape and then be collected for energy consumption. So I went through the process of hydraulic fracturing in a lot of detail because I really want to emphasize how invasive the process of natural gas collection is to the subsurface. And it turns out that by collecting natural gas, we're actually making the subsurface more hospitable to microorganisms. And we're doing this a couple of ways. The first is that all the crack cracks in the shale actually provide space for microorganisms to live down there. Uh, additionally, the water used to fracture the shale contains a lot of nutrients that microorganisms can use to grow. The water used to fracture the shale also is not sterilized. So there are surface microorganisms that are getting displaced into the subsurface. And it turns out that these microorganisms are able to live in this uh, non-native habitat of theirs. 
And this is really fascinating because the subsurface is a very inhospitable environment, especially to human standards. It's very warm, it's like 80 degrees Celsius. The water in these wells is 10 times saltier than the ocean. And then the pressure that far below ground is 14 times higher than what we're feeling right now. So very extreme environment. But we've been able to image microorganisms that can grow in these fracking wells. And one microorganism that we're particularly interested in is named halanaerobium. And halanaerobium is the microorganism that I do my research on. And halanaerobium isn't just important to fracking wells in Ohio. We like to think of halanaerobium as a cosmopolitan bacteria. So it can grow anywhere where fracking is going on. And on the map, each dot represents a well where halanaerobium has been found. So you can see that it's not geographically constrained and just very well adapted to live in these uh, deep subsurface environments. And this fact is pretty fascinating because halanaerobium is not native to the subsurface. It's actually native, it's naturally found on the surface with us. But through the process of hydraulic fracturing, it gets introduced into the subsurface and is able to grow. So my research involves trying to figure out how this microorganism can grow in such an extreme environment. And so you may be wondering how we get access to halanaerobium. So our lab collaborates with fracking companies here in the state of Ohio, and they will give us uh, water or fracking fluid uh, from their fracking wells. And so the water shown up there is what uh, the water that comes straight out of a well looks like. And so we bring this fracking water into the lab and we streak it on a nutrient dense media that has a very high salt concentration and we incubate this media in an oxygen free environment. And by doing this, we're able to get halanaerobium isolates straight from the environment. And once we have these isolates, we're able to perform growth experiments to figure out more about how halanaerobium can, can grow. So I've been working on halanaerobium for the past two years and the research question I've been trying to answer is, are there any repercussions associated with halanaerobium growth in these fracking wells, since halanaerobium and fracking can live all across the country? And the answer is yes. We've identified three different problems that can be associated with halanaerobium growth. What we've found is that halanaerobium produces sulfide, and this sulfide can cause chemical reactions that cause the pipes in the fracking wells to clog. Additionally, the sulfide causes corrosion of the metal used to make the hydraulically fractured wells. And the last is that we believe halanaerobium can form a biofilm in the subsurface. And so now I'm going to go into a little bit of laboratory data to back this up. So in the lab, we're able to incubate halanaerobium in an oxygen-free environment with, uh, in the presence of a metal coupon. And this metal coupon is the same type of metal that fracking companies use to build their wells. And you can see that when halanaerobium is incubated in the presence of the sulfur source, thiosulfate, halanaerobium is able to cause corrosion of this metal coupon. And so if this is going on in the laboratory, this could also be going on in fracking wells all across the country where halanaerobium is found and thiosulfate is found. Additionally, we believe halanaerobium can form a biofilm in the subsurface. And we believe these biofilms are uh, caused by the increase in pressure that uh, halanaerobium experiences when it's in the subsurface. And so I hope you can see. Um, on the bottom two panels, we have grown halanaerobium under a high pressure. And then on the top two panels, we have halanaerobium grown at atmospheric pressure, what we're feeling right now. And when halanaerobium is grown under pressure, we see an increase in cellular attachment to surfaces, which is shown in red. And then we see an increase in EPS formation, which is shown in green. So we believe halanaerobium may be able to attach and form biofilms in the hydraulically fractured subsurface. And this is of interest to fracking companies because the fractures in the shale uh, that are produced through the process of hydraulic fracturing are only uh, micrometers to centimeters in size. So if 
microorganisms are clumping together in these fractures. They could clog them and then limit the amount of natural gas that a fracking well could produce. So of course, the fracking industry is very interested in limiting this sort of microbial activity in their wells. So I've told you a lot of bad things associated with halonerobium, and you may be wondering why we don't just try to kill halonerobium and not worry about it anymore. And the truth is, it's just way too expensive to filter sterilize the millions of gallons of water that it takes to fracture these wells. So researchers like myself are trying to learn as much as we can about the microorganisms that grow in these wells so that we can use their growth to our advantage. And it turns out that halonerobium may be able to help us in two different ways in the future. So this is ongoing research, but what we're finding is that halonerobium may be able to help increase the amount, the amount of methane that one of these fracking wells produces. So what we're learning is that there is another microorganism that grows in these wells that produces methane. But this methane producer relies on halonerobium for food because they live in a community. So in the future, these two microorganisms could be used to help increase the amount of methane that these uh, hydraulically fractured wells are producing. Additionally, halonerobium may be able to help us in, our, in wastewater recovery. So I've really emphasized how much water is involved in this fracking process. And right now, this water becomes very toxic over the lifetime of the well. And this water is so toxic that there's no way to clean it up right now. So we're accumulating billions of gallons of wastewater that cannot be cleaned through the collection of natural gas. However, halonerobium can grow in this water without, uh, pretty easily. So the thought is that if we learn more about halonerobium growth, we could potentially manipulate halonerobium in the future so that it can degrade some of the toxic compounds and help us clean up some of the waste associated with hydraulic fracturing. And so with that, I hope you now have a better understanding of hydraulic fracturing and all the work that goes into producing natural gas so that we can turn on our lights. And I know everyone has very different opinions on hydraulic fracturing, but researchers like myself are trying to learn as much as we can about the microorganisms that grow in these deep subsurface environments so that we can hopefully use their growth to our advantage and maybe make hydraulic fracturing a little bit more sustainable in the future. So with that, I want to say thank you for your attention, and I'll be around at the end if anyone has any questions. Thank you.